Okay, we're back. More, more, more. Um, hopefully you are going through uh, all these homework problems and doing them all. Uh, we are now going to uh, do some problems on uh, implicit differentiation. So this is something we learned very briefly in the video that we did on the last day of school. Um, so hopefully you watched that video. Uh, and here's me, I'm just going to do all the homework. Um, let's go. Number seven, uh, this is x e to the y um, minus 10x uh, plus 3y equals 0. Mm, goal, um, find uh, dy dx. Okay, so um, this is, I think, really hard at first until you get the hang of it, then it's sort of easy. So what, and they don't, um, it starts off, Already, this problem is, is kind of hard. Um, what should we do? We should just differentiate both sides with respect to x. And so we're going to take the derivative of the entire left-hand side and the derivative of the entire right-hand side. And, okay, the derivative of the sum of a bunch of things is, is the sum uh, of the derivatives. So I'm going to, uh, at least for this first time, uh, split this up into a bunch of little problems. Um, plus the derivative with respect to x of 3y. Um, and that equals zero. Okay, so uh, now I just have to differentiate these one at a time. Well, okay, I'll do the easy ones first. What's the derivative of 10x? This is just 10. Uh, what's the derivative of 3y? Well, note that I'm differentiating with respect to x. So uh, I'm asking the question, uh, what happens when uh, I change x by an infinitely small amount? So the derivative with respect to x of 3y is going to be 3 times, well, whatever the derivative of y is with respect to x. Well, that's dy dx. It's the very thing I'm trying to find. Um, okay, uh, good. And now over here, we have sort of the, the hard one. Uh, I'll put it in, in, in brackets. Uh, I need to differentiate x times e to the y. Okay, so first of all, and I want to do that with respect to x, so you have to train yourself to think of x times e to the y as being the product of two things, which of course is what it is. Uh, it's the product of x and e to the y. Well, what's e to the y? It's e to the some variable y, which depends on x. How does y depend on x? Well, it's not easy to answer that question, but you should, you should think of um, this entire equation is explaining the relationship that x and y have with each other. That's just what an equation in two variables is. It defines a relationship between those two variables. So in this case, the relationship between x and y is quite complicated, but you should know that x depends on y and y depends on x. And so if y is something that depends on x, uh, then um, <clears throat> I'm going to need to use the product rule and also the chain rule. So let's do this kind of uh, slowly and carefully. Um, what is, so I have to do the product rule, so this is the derivative of the first, which is 1, uh, times the second, so that part is easy, uh, e to the y, plus, and now, I, now it's going to be x times whatever the derivative of e to the y is. Well, what is the derivative of e to the y? The derivative of e to the y is something that depends on x, so the derivative of e to the something is uh, e to the something, that should be a plus, uh, oh no, times e to the something uh, back inside for the derivative of that something. Uh, okay, and uh, I'll just kind of rewrite this now a little bit, so I get e to the y plus x e to the y dy dx uh, minus 10 plus 3 uh, dy dx equals 0. Um, okay, so it's not that exciting of a problem really. Um, we're just differentiating both sides with respect to x, that's what we get. Uh, the goal is to find dy dx, so now we just do algebra. Um, so we, we, we uh, factor dy dx out of these two terms, giving us x uh, e to the y uh, plus 3, and then these two terms we just move over to the other side, so it's 10 minus uh, e to the y, and therefore um, this problem is 10 minus e to the y over x e to the y plus 3. Uh, hopefully I did that right. Okay, more. Uh, 8 um, is just 
like another one, man. Uh, this is e to the x y uh, plus x squared minus y squared equals ten. I have no idea what this curve is. You can type this into um, Desmos or something and get a picture of this uh, graph, but I don't want to do that. Uh, okay, let's just differentiate both sides with respect to x. Uh, okay, well. I'm going to take the derivative of both sides, so in other words, I need to find the derivative with respect to x of e to the xy, and I need to take the derivative with respect to x of x squared, and I need to take the derivative with respect to x of y squared, and when I take the derivative with respect to x of 10, I just get 0. Uh, okay, so uh, here we go. What is the derivative of e to the xy? All right, this is a little tricky because... Um, well, again, what is y? It's something which depends on x. So this is x times sort of something that depends on x, or a function of x, you could say. So I have to do the product rule uh, here uh, and the chain rule. Okay, so I'll just do it. What is the derivative of e to the something? Answer, the derivative of e to the something is e to the something back inside for the derivative of xy. And the derivative of xy requires the product rule. So it will be the derivative of the first times the second plus the first x times the derivative of the second. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative with respect to x of y squared is, well, the derivative of, some, remember, y is something that depends on x. So the derivative of y squared, the derivative of something squared is 2y back inside dy dx equals zero. So now I have this big mess and I just distribute everything through. This is just the only way to do this basically. Plus x e to the x y dy dx. It's kind of tedious. Plus 2x minus 2y uh, dy dx uh, equals zero. Now I have an equation uh, which relates x's, y's, and dy dx. So I just collect uh, dy dx and x e to the xy minus 2y. And over here, I get uh, negative 2x. Um, uh, it would have been prettier if I had done it the other way. Too late. Uh, negative 2x um, minus y e to the xy. Well, it's never too late. Uh, dy dx is uh, 2x plus y e to the x y um, over um, 2 y minus x e to the x y. This is disgusting. This problem is totally just lame. I'm having like some crisis here about how boring this homework is. Um, this is just practice with implicit differentiation. So if you can do this, great. Uh, hopefully there aren't too many more of these Freaking things. 9 and 17, huh? Uh, okay, 9. Hopefully uh, this is a little bit easier. It's all algebraic. Um, x cubed, y cubed, uh, minus y equals x. Okay, I got this. Uh, let's uh, take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So this time I'm going to kind of skip some steps. So just differentiating x cubed y cubed, how do you do that? Well, I have to do the product rule. So it's the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared, derivative of the first times the second, so times y cubed, derivative of the first times the second, plus the first x cubed, times the derivative of y cubed. What is the derivative of y cubed? Well, the derivative of something cubed is 3 something squared back inside for the derivative of the something. And the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. And then the, uh, the derivative of y with respect to x is just dy dx. Uh, and the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Uh, okay, so uh, what we get is that um, dy dx is x cubed 3, well, times 3y squared minus 1 and now just 1 minus 3 uh, x squared y cubed. So the final answer for this problem should be uh, 3 x cubed y squared minus 1 over 1 minus 3 
x squared y cubed. I hope these are right. Of course, at any point I could be making some small algebra mistake or whatever. Okay, um, good. Uh, let's do a couple more. We're just going to do them all. 17 uh, is just more. Y equals sine uh, xy. Uh, so let's go. Uh, this, the, uh, once again, a difference at both sides with respect to x. So the derivative of y is just dy dx. And the derivative of sine xy, well, the derivative of sine of something is cosine of something back inside for the derivative of the something. So I have to take the derivative of xy. Well, the derivative of xy requires the product rule. So the derivative of xy is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first uh, times the derivative of the second. Uh, and I guess what I have to do now is distribute. So that becomes y cosine xy plus uh, x cosine xy dy dx. And I distribute so that I can uh, subtract and collect. And so I get dy dx times 1 minus x cosine xy uh, equals y cosine xy. This is a lot of algebra. Uh, and so uh, dy dx is y cosine xy um, over ah, uh, over uh, 1 minus x cosine xy. Okay, uh, good. Uh, more. Okay, so that was the part of the homework that was just like, just, well, hold on, I shouldn't speak yet. 31, what's 31? Uh, yeah, it's just another problem. Uh, tan uh, x plus y uh, equals x. And I think what they want to know now specifically is... Um, the derivative at 0, 0. So what we want uh, is uh, dy dx uh, at uh, the point 0, comma, 0. Um, well, um, let's differentiate both sides with respect to x. So if you take the derivative of tan of x plus y, that's going to give you secant squared x plus y back inside for the derivative of x plus y, which is 1 plus 2y dx. And here, it's just 1. Okay, so multiplying through by cosine, uh, that gives me uh, that 1 plus dy dx is just cosine squared x plus y. It seems like the better thing to do. Uh, and then, um, well, I mean, then there we go. So dy dx in general formula is cosine squared x plus y minus 1. So I guess that's like negative sine squared x plus y. But never mind that. Uh, what is dy dx uh, at uh, the point 0, 0? Well, and I haven't mentioned this yet in this entire video. Uh, by the way, big picture, what we've been really doing is we've been computing this whole time formulas for... Uh, the slope of the tangent line to these curves in terms of um, the x and y coordinates of a point on that curve. So now for the first time in this homework we're actually like going to do one. So this is a general formula uh, and I can find particular slopes by plugging in particular points. So first of all just confirm that the point 0, 0 is a point on this curve. Uh, in other words, if when x is 0 and y is 0 um, you get tan of 0, which is 0, equals 0. In other words, 0, 0 satisfies this equation, so therefore 0, 0 is a point on this curve. Uh, and uh, then it's uh, uh, applicable, therefore, to plug in 0, 0 into this formula, and we get uh, cosine of 0 is um, 1, so this whole thing is just 0. This is just very uh, boring, uh, but what it tells you is that, uh, in fact, this curve, whatever it looks like, I have no idea, um, has uh, a horizontal tangent line at the point zero, zero. 
in fact, I would basically, I would use calculus in order to help me figure out what this curve is doing. Uh, um, uh, so that I could understand it. Okay. Um, couple more. 38 is just more, man. At least we get a picture now. Um, 37 is this thing called a bifolium. Um, and I guess you've probably never heard of this before. Um, bifolium, interesting, very interesting curve. X squared plus Y squared. Uh, squared equals 4X squared Y. And I think that if you express this in polar, it is much prettier. But since I can't exactly remember how to do that right now, I won't try to. Uh, I kind of know how, but I kind of don't. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, there's this point, uh, 1 comma 1, and that is the point um, that we are interested in. And what does this shape look like? They give you a little picture. It looks kind of like this. It's a pretty bad picture. So there's this point 1 comma 1. First of all, should we trust them that the point 1 comma 1 is a point on this curve? Probably. Uh, but if you plug in uh, 1 for x and 1 for y, then you get uh, 2 squared is 4 on the left, and you get 4 on the right. So indeed, uh, 1 comma 1 uh, is satisfied by this equation, and so it's a point on the curve. Um, now we get to the question shortly, which is, uh, what is the uh, equation of the tangent line to the curve at the point 1 comma 1? And it looks like, well, I can't tell. My picture's kind of bad, but it's maybe not flat. Um, actually, I think it is flat. Uh, it looks a little bit better in the book than it does. So maybe the book is telling me that the answer is zero. I really don't know. Let's do the math. Uh, okay, well, um, let's go. So differentiating both sides with respect to x. Uh, what's the derivative of x squared plus y squared squared? Well, the derivative of something squared is 2. Uh, something back inside for the derivative of x squared plus y squared, which is 2x plus, and the derivative of y squared is 2y dy dx. Okay, so I've been talking less and less as this video has been going on, um, but anyway, there it is. Okay, uh, now, uh, what about 4x squared y? I have to do the product rule now, so Mm, the derivative of 4x squared, so derivative of the first, uh, will be 8x. Um, ugh, this problem sucks. Uh, derivative of the first times the second, uh, plus the first, uh, which is 4x squared, times the derivative of the second, so that's dy dx. So let me just double check that I did my product rule properly. Derivative of the first times the second, plus the first, times the derivative. Yeah, looking pretty good. All right, and now... Yeah. Actually, the, 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 the smart thing to do now is to just, instead of wasting a lot of time algebraically simplifying, the smart thing to do now is to just plug in 1 for x and 1 for y everywhere. So let's just do, let's just do that smart thing for once. So what do I get? If I plug in 1 and 1, I get uh, 2. So it's, what I get is 2 times 2 times uh, 2 plus 2 dy dx. Um, equals, here I get 1 and 1, so that's 8 plus 4 dy dx. So the goal is to find dy dx when x is 1 and y is 1, so that's I think what I'm doing, right? So um, now that get, that's 4, so distributing through that gives me 8 plus uh, 8 uh, dy dx uh, equals 8 plus 4 uh, dy dx. And the only possible way for this equation to be true, uh, for 8 dy dx to be 4 dy dx, is if um, dy dx is 0. And so, indeed, we have just determined that the slope of the tangent line here is 0. And so, just like it looks like in the picture in the book, uh, there is a horizontal tangent line at the point 1 comma 1 um, on the bifolium. I really hope that I have done Oh, no. I did the wrong problem. That is so 
sad. Well, please ignore the last five minutes um, because I'm going to decide 37. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't even know if they want to do 38, but here we are. What is 38? The also famous curve, x cubed plus um, y cubed minus 6xy uh, equals 0. This is famous. It is called the folium of Descartes. Uh, and this is one of the um, uh, famous curves that uh, Descartes explores uh, in his uh, book about geometry. Uh, there is a picture of this hanging in um, the room I used to teach in before Kirk stole it from me. Uh, what does it look like? It's kind of got a little type shape. Um, that's roughly right. Okay, and then there is this point, four thirds, uh, comma, eight thirds, uh, on the folium. Now, I really don't feel like double checking that this is true, but apparently if you plug in four thirds for x and eight thirds for uh, y, um, then uh, you'll get uh, that this equation is satisfied, so that is indeed a point on this curve, and our goal is to find the slope of the tangent line there. Um, so I guess it at least feels like we're doing real problems now. Um, and I don't know, that slope to me looks like one and a half or two or something, who knows? Let's do algebra to calculate and algebra to find out. So okay, I differentiate both sides with respect to x, I get 3x squared plus 3y squared. The derivative of something cubed is 3 something squared, back inside for the derivative of the something. Minus, now I need to do 6 times, well what is the derivative of x times y? Um, uh, or maybe I'll just do, think of like 6x as my first function and y as my second. So the derivative of the first is 6, no, I changed, I changed my mind. Uh, the negative is confusing, so I think it's safer to do this. What is the derivative of x, y? Derivative of the first is 1 times the second, uh, plus the first times the derivative of the second and then of course equals zero. Uh, so now I have a big um, mess. Uh, let's see, uh, 3x squared plus 3y squared dy dx uh, minus 6y minus 6x dy dx uh, equals zero. Okay, so calculus is done. Now I need to try to make some sense of this. So let's factor. That gives me 3y squared minus 6x equals, moving that to the other side, I get 6y minus 3x squared. And therefore, dy dx is 6y minus 3x squared over 3y squared minus 6x. And I guess I can take a 3 out of the top of the line, so it's 2y minus x squared over y squared minus 2x. All right, what is this? It's a formula which will tell you the slope of the tangent line to the curve at any point. So now we go do it. What is dy dx at the point 4 thirds comma 8 thirds? Well, I just plug in all these points. So it's 2 times 8 thirds advanced fractions minus 4 thirds squared, so 16 ninths, all over um, y squared, so that's 64 ninths, minus 2x, so that's 8 thirds. So, let's see, uh, what does that give me? Uh, getting constants 48 minus 16 over 9, over... Um, 64 minus 24 over 9, so that's 32 over 40. So I believe that the answer to this is dividing by 4, eight, dividing by 8 gives me 4 fifths. So if we believe me, uh, then the slope of this tangent line to this folium is indeed uh, four fifths. Um, that's like probably right. Um, 
Good. Okay. Uh, that was the sort of uh, tedious part of this homework. Four problems to go. Um, these are, I think, a little bit easier. Uh, this is the thing we did, depending on what period you're in, we may have done this um, uh, the week you were in school, or you may have learned about this through the video. Um, so, here we are, 67. Um, oh, here we go, okay. So, y equals x squared root 3x minus 2 all over x minus 1 squared. Okay, now you might think this problem sucks because there's all this like chain rule and product rule and quotient rule, but what you're supposed to do with this problem is uh, use um, logarithmic differentiation. So take the natural log of both sides just because like you can and now um, by applying log rules on the right hand side this becomes ln of x squared um, plus ln of 3x minus 2 to the 1 half minus ln of x minus 1 squared and of course this can be simplified even more as 2 ln x plus 1 half ln uh, 3x minus 2 uh, maybe I'll just do that uh, minus 2 ln x minus 1 and so um, having done this preliminary pre-calculus I can now take the derivative of both sides with respect to x the derivative of ln of something is 1 over the something back inside for the derivative of the something. And on the right hand side I now have much less work to do. That's 2 over x plus uh, 1 half times the derivative of ln of something is 1 over the something back inside for the derivative of 3x minus 2 which is 3 and over here we get minus 2 times the derivative of ln of something is 1 over the something back inside for the derivative of the something. Okay, and so my final answer, therefore, uh, is y, in other words, the original problem, x squared root 3x minus 2 over x minus 1 squared uh, times um, 2 over x plus, see if I can squeeze this in, 3 over 2, 3x minus 2, minus 2 over x minus 1. Cha. Uh, kind of failed there. Yeah. Sure. Um, good and good. Okay, um, three problems to go. 69? No, I'm just not doing that. It's the same thing. Um, 71, 73, though, are a little bit interesting. 71, uh, y equals x to the 2 over x. Okay, so, uh, what should we do? Uh, well, this is not an exponential function, and it is not a power function. It is a complicated function of the form function to the function. So we got to rescue the princess. We need to bring down 2 over x. So logarithmic differentiation to the rescue. Uh, I take the natural log of both sides uh, and I basically just have to do this. Because um, if I take the natural log of both sides, now I can apply the log rule which says that this is 2 over x uh, times ln x. Okay, and I might even rewrite 2 over x as 2x to the negative 1 just for uh, being careful. And now that I've done this uh, 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 pre-calculus, I can differentiate both sides with respect to x. So the derivative of ln y is 1 over y, back inside dy dx. Uh, and uh, now I have to differentiate the right-hand side with respect to x. So the derivative of this would be um, neg the derivative of 2x to the negative 1 is negative 2x to the negative 2, which is the first times the second, um, plus the first times the derivative of uh, ln x, which is 1 over x. 
And so I actually think we get something kind of cute on the right hand side here. We get um, uh, negative 2x to the negative 2 ln x. But here we also get x to the negative 2. So that's uh, 2x to the negative 2. Uh, and so this, if I factor out an x to the negative 2, then that would give me 2 minus 2 ln x. Ah. Uh, and I still have 1 over y dy dx. And therefore, after all this work, what is the actual answer to this problem? It is y, in other words, x to the 2 over x, times, and probably people would write this as like, I don't know, 2, 1 minus ln x, and then all over x squared. Or maybe they would even simplify that further. Okay, uh, good. This one I don't want to do because exactly completely. 73, is it just like also the exact same thing? It totally is. Um, I'll just do it anyway. Um, oh, I noticed that 67 was a logarithmic differentiation optional, but 71 was a logarithmic differentiation obligatory. Okay, 73, uh, x minus 2 to the x plus 1. Um, x minus 2 to the x plus 1. Uh, well, once again, this is of the form function to the function, so the only way to do this is by first uh, taking logarithms. So we take the log of both sides, here you get ln y, here you get x plus 1 times ln x minus 2. That was pre-calc, now we do calculus. The derivative of both sides with respect to x, the derivative of ln of something, 1 over the something, back inside for the derivative of the something. And here I have to do the product rule, derivative of the first, which is 1 times the second plus the first x plus 1 times the derivative of uh, ln of x minus 1. And the derivative of ln of something is 1 over the something back inside for the derivative of x minus 2, which is just 1. Uh, and so we get that dy dx is y x minus 2 to the x plus 1 times, and then this, this mess, ln of x minus 2 plus x plus 1 over x minus 2. Okay, so you now not only know how to do uh, the product rule, the quotient rule, the derivative of composite functions, but you now also know how to do functions that are of the form function to a function. All right, um, you pretty much know it. No, uh, not, not quite yet. I'm going to stop the video now, and I'm going to do some more problems on derivatives of inverse trig functions.